In the last video, we discussed the impact the drug rapamycin has on Alzheimer's with a focus on autophagy, a cellular cleanup process. But in this video, I'd like to shift our attention toward mitochondria. Go ahead and say it. The powerhouse of the cell. If you haven't seen the first video, did you get an excused absence signed by your parent or legal guardian? Well, all right, I'll let this one slide, but let's catch you up. In short, we covered the current state of evidence pointing to rapamycin having an effect in delaying and even reversing some signs of Alzheimer's disease. Rapamycin is a drug or molecule, and for now, just know that it's a drug being investigated for its wide-reaching anti-disease effects, and now Alzheimer's. In that previous video, we also went over how rapamycin increases the level of autophagy inside the neurons, the brain cells, via a series of studies, with a special emphasis on this one. Autophagy is a system of vesicles that engulf large sections of the cell and destroy those components. For example, an accumulation of tau proteins, one of the proteins involved in the pathogenesis, or in less nerdy language, the progression, of Alzheimer's could be eliminated by increased autophagy. Interesting, and there's some nuances that we went over that I won't rehash here, but I recommend going back and catch those uh, details in the first video. Anyway, I ended up pointing out these data here. You can ignore the top part unless you're a molecular and cell biologist. It's the only reason why I added it. For the rest, we'll focus on these conditions first. CON is control or normal non-Alzheimer's disease mice. RAP are also mice without Alzheimer's, but treated with rapamycin. The AD there is likely obvious, but it's an Alzheimer's disease model. And the AD plus RAP is the same model given rapamycin treatment. Now that we're acquainted, I also mentioned that uh, this uh, far right measure, LC32, is a marker of more mature forms of autophagy. It's not a perfect marker, but it's a common one used. These other three measures that I never went into, and that's because two of them are actually linked to mitochondria. This uh, SQSTM1 P62 is a cargo protein that attaches to target proteins for elimination. In addition, Parkin is an enzyme that tags other proteins to be targets for elimination. This tag is called a ubiquitin molecule. It is most well known for enacting this role on mitochondria. So Parkin will ubiquitinate or tag proteins on mitochondria, which recruits P62, otherwise known as the sequestosome, which sounds like, honestly, it should have a deep thunderous announcement. The sequestosome. Which binds the ubiquitinated proteins on mitochondria. This uh, signals the autophagy machinery to engulf mitochondria and destroy them. This is called mitophagy. Okay, returning to the data. We see that rapamycin seems to reduce P62 and increase Parkin levels, which might make it seem like the mechanism is stalling at the midway point of the mitophagy process. But the clarity may come from a deeper look into the cell. What we've been looking at is the total cell lysate, meaning all the contents of the cell. However, researchers have the ability to separate out sections of the cell to probe each section individually. And this reveals so much more. If we look at just mitochondria, suddenly the story changes because P62 is now more concentrated after rapamycin treatment in this Alzheimer's model. So P62, Parkin, and LC32 are elevated around mitochondria, indicating there may be some strong autophagy afoot. But we don't need to speculate, we can actually visualize it too. Before we do that, check out the LC32 in the non-mitochondrial sections of the neuron. It's flat. That means the autophagy action is being driven around mitochondria. But as promised, let's look. Here, we're looking at images within the neurons. We have all of our conditions on the left side there, and up top we have different molecular markers to identify sections of the cell. So TOMM20, 
there is a measure of mitochondria, now illuminated in green. The red is a measure of, well, as you already know, autophagy, being LC3. And blue, DAPI, is a measure of the nucleus of the cell. Now, look at the increasing red in the AD and AD plus RAP conditions, indicating more autophagy. I explained why there might be more autophagy in the Alzheimer's condition without rapamycin in the last video. So another call to check that video out. I'll link it at the end for you. But the takeaway here is that LC3 is more present and we can see it co-localizes with TOM20, quantified on the right side, more with the rapamycin treatment. Granted, these microscopy images, which are what we're looking at here, could be better, like offering more detailed resolution, but this is what we have to work with. So, there's some evidence mitophagy might be happening more with rapamycin treatment, but one thing that we should also ask ourselves is, what triggers it? I mean, why would these enzymes, these proteins, suddenly turn on mitochondria and start destroying them? And what's the benefit? Well, let's get into that in a minute. I mentioned this in the other video, but uh, rapamycin research in humans is still pretty sparse at the time of this recording. But I pulled together what studies exist and created a template explaining different dosing and dosing strategies that have been used and shown to be effective while minimizing side effects. I include that as part of the Physionic Insiders, a community and platform where I host uh, premium videos, podcasts, articles, and much more. Be sure to check it out if you're interested. It's uh, linked in the description. But let's answer these mitochondrial questions. What triggers the neuron to suddenly attempt to murder its mitochondria? Well, there's a common trigger for mitochondria called membrane potential. Essentially, the difference in charge between the exterior of the mitochondrion, otherwise stated as the inside of the cell, and the inside of the mitochondrion. That difference, with it being much more negative inside the mitochondrion, is called the mitochondrial membrane potential. A healthy mitochondrion has a strong membrane potential. However, if mitochondria experience damage or buildup of toxic proteins or some other insult, the membrane potential can be compromised. And that compromised membrane potential attracts destruction enzymes like Parkin. So let's look at that data. I suppose it's pretty obvious, but look at the Alzheimer's condition. The membrane potential is crushed and importantly, the addition of rapamycin recovers large amounts of this membrane potential. Notably, not the whole, but the majority. Okay, so the membrane potential is compromised in Alzheimer's disease, which is likely one, if not a major, contributing factor for mitochondria being targeted by autophagy. But there's something else happening here too. Look at these data. Here, I'm showing you the presence of cell death proteins. These proteins are more specifically called pro-apoptotic proteins. Bax is one of them. The more Bax is present in the cell, the more it'll attach to mitochondria and encourage the formation of pores that leak out specific factors from the mitochondria. In doing so, these factors stimulate mass chaos in the cell, which ultimately leads to the shredding of DNA in the nucleus, mass annihilation of functional proteins in the cell, and the eventual death of the cell. Obviously, <laughs> when discussing neurons, it's not a great thing. And pop open these data again, see the Alzheimer's condition? Over a doubling in Bax is present in the cell. Rapamycin eliminates that increase. There's more data corroborating these uh, results for those uh, in the know. I'm talking about elevated cytosolic cytochrome C, cleaved caspase activity, and much more. Okay, so let's have some fun here, and let's also put this all together. Here's where I'd actually call on you to start thinking of the possibilities on what this all means. How would clearing out mitochondria help? Well, clearly the mitochondria in Alzheimer's neurons are in a critical condition, considering the different lines of evidence that we saw. So it stands to reason that they are experiencing significant insult of some sort. On one hand, rapamycin reduces that insult, possibly by reducing the production of these toxic proteins, like aberrant tau proteins, or rapamycin simply activates autophagy that eliminates large amounts of these toxic products in the cell. 
or obviously both could also be true. In addition, rapamycin may preserve the brain cells by reducing the accumulation of these cell death proteins. And it's able to do that through similar mechanisms as those that we just described. Keeping mitochondria healthy and eliminating overly damaged mitochondria could sustain a healthier, more robust cell, which translates to better mental function, theoretically. Obviously, some of this is speculation, but at least we have some evidence for it. If you haven't seen the first video on the details of autophagy in Alzheimer's, check uh, this video right here. And if you have already, I have another related content right here. Thanks for nerding out with me and bring your excused absence next time.